Hi there, my name is Katie and welcome to this presentation for the 11 plus test. Now this presentation is useful for anyone who is undergoing their 11 plus assessment and wish to better their chances of scoring highly. Now throughout this presentation I will provide several sample questions which I will walk you through step by step to ensure you know how to answer each type of question. Now I've focused on the types of questions that many people seem to struggle with during their assessment so it will only focus on a few questions rather than the majority of different questions in an 11 plus assessment. Okay, so before I begin the practice questions, it is important that you know what to expect during your 11 plus test. So the, the 11 plus test is designed to assess whether grammar school is a suitable choice for pupils wishing to attend a grammar school and more importantly, whether or not that choice is in fact the right choice. So the test is broken up into four main areas so in the assessment you can expect to answer questions based on the following areas. So here we have English, maths, nonverbal reasoning and verbal reasoning. Now in this presentation in particular I'm only going to focus on the maths questions and I will create other videos for each of the other sections so be sure to check them out as they are uploaded. Okay, so here we have a sample question based on number sequences and the question is as follows. So I think of a number, I then double it, I add four, the answer is 22. What number did I start with? Now to work out this type of question you need to work backwards. So remember when you work backwards you have to do the opposite to what it tells you in the actual question. So where it says add 4, you would have to minus 4 because you're working backwards to find the original number. Okay, so let's let's work through this sequence. So we start with 22 because that's what we end up with, minus 4 because as it says you need to minus as opposed to add. So 22 minus 4 would give you 18. So then it says double it, so this means that you would have to halve it instead. So 18 divided by 2 and this would give you the answer of 9. Now you could go back through and use this number at the beginning to make sure that the number you have got is correct. So 9 doubled would be 18 plus 4 would give you 22. So you know in fact that that answer is correct. So let's move on to another practice question. So I think of a number, I multiply it by 5, I add 3, I subtract 8, the answer is 95. What number did I start with? So again, the same principles apply, you would need to work backwards and do the opposite to what the question is saying. So 95 plus 8, because there it says subtract 8, so you would need to do the opposite, would give you 103. So 103 minus 3, because again that says add 3, so you'd need to minus. So 103 minus 3 would give you 100, and then 100 divided by 5 would give you 20. So again, if you put that in at the beginning of this sequence, so 20 multiplied by 5, so that would give you 100, then add 3 would give you 103, subtract 8, which would give you 95. So again, you know that you, the answer here is correct because you've worked it both ways and you know that that number actually works in the sequence. Okay, so another type of question will be based on mental arithmetic. So here is your question. What is three, three quarters of 180? So for these types of questions, you need to know how to work with fractions. Now, a good way to remember this and you should write this down is to divide the whole number by the bottom part of the fraction which would be 4 and then multiply it by the top number which would be 3. Okay so 180 divided by 4 because we're dividing by the bottom number of the fraction so that would give you 45 and then 45 multiplied by 3 which is the top part of the fraction would give you 135. So these questions will become relatively easier and you will be able to perform them relatively quickly the more that you practice these types of questions. Okay, so let's move on to another example of mental arithmetic. So the question here is asking what is 5 eighths as a percentage? 
Now for these types of questions, if you divide the top number by the bottom number and then multiply it by 100, you'll be able to work out, convert the uh, fraction into a percentage. So here we've got 5 divided by 8 because you've got 5 eighths as your fraction would give you 0.625. So this gives you a decimal, but what you want to find out is a percentage. So to work from this decimal here to convert it to a percentage, you would multiply by 100, which would give you 62.5%. Okay, so another example of mental arithmetic. So here we've got what is 0.8 as a percentage. So for this, you know, from this part, you will need to convert a decimal into percentage by multiplying it by 100. So 0.8 multiplied by 100. So if you move the decimal point two spaces to the right and then fill in the gaps with zeros, you would end up with 80%. So they are pretty simple the more that you practice them and you will become competent at these types of questions the more practice that you undergo. Okay, so another type of question focuses on area and perimeter. So here we've got a question that's asked you to find out the area of this equilateral square. So here we have the square which is 8 centimetres in height and 8 centimetres in width. So these questions are pretty easy if you know how to work out the area of different types of shapes. So for a square, you should know that the area would be base times height. So 8 times 8 would give you 64. So the area of this square here would be 64. Now, if you were asked to find out the perimeter of the square, you all you need to do is add all of the sides of the square. So you would have 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 because there's four sides of this square here. So this would give you the answer of 32. So, okay, let's move on to a slightly harder area question. So, again, it's asking you to find out the area of this shape, but here we've, you can see that there are two shapes joined together, so you need to work out the area. So a key tip for this type of question is to break it down. So let's work out the, the area of the square first. So you know that the height of the square is 5 centimetres, and along here would be 14 centimetres. But if this is an equilateral square, you know that this side at the bottom would be 5 centimetres also because the height of the square is also 5 centimetres. So the area of the square would be 5 times 5, which would give you 25. So you've worked out that part of the shape there. So let's move on to the area of the triangle. So the height of the triangle is the same as the square so it would be five centimeters and you know that this combined would be 14 centimeters but you've already used five centimeters there so 14 minus five would give you nine centimeters for the base of this triangle so nine times five equals equals 45 but because this is a triangle and not a square you would need to divide that by two so it would give you 22.5 and then finally, you would add the 22.5 and the 25, which would give you the answer of 47.5. Okay, so here is a different type of maths question, which relates to graphs and charts. So the question asks you, what is the average of history grades C or above from 2004 to 2009 to the nearest whole number? So here we have the chart. So you here we've got the years at the bottom of the bar chart and the number of people who scored a grade C or above in history. Okay, so to work out the average, you would need to add up all of these columns here and then divide it by how many columns there actually are. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six columns. So you'd need to divide the total by six. So if you added these up together. Now you can do this alongside with me. So 56 plus 64 plus 72 plus 78 plus 84 plus 58 would give you a total of 412. And you would have to divide 412 by the six because as mentioned, there are six 
different years, which would give you 68.66 recurring. And remember, the question asks you to work it out to the nearest whole number. So because the numbers after the decimal are above 5, you would round this number up to 69. Whereas if these numbers were below 5, then you would keep that as 68. But because they are higher than 5, you need to round the number up. Okay, so let's try a different type of question. And this refers to angles. So here we have the question, find the missing angle of the triangle. So here we've got 78, 36. So you need to find out this angle here. So you should know that the angles of a triangle need to add up to 180 degrees. So if you add the 36 and the 78 together, you would get 114. So you could minus that from the 180, which would give you 66. So you now know that that angle there would be 66 degrees. Okay, so another question on angles. So this is slightly more different, but it requires the same logic and understanding. So a triangle has angles in the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. What is the size of the smallest of the three angles? Okay, so you, you know already from the previous question that there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So if we add up these ratios here, so we have a total which would be 9, so 4 plus 3 plus 2 would give you 9, and divide that by the 180 degrees would give you 20, and then times the 20 by each of these ratios here. So 20 divided by 2 is 40, 20 divided by 3 is 60, and 20 divided by the 4 total multiplied, sorry, is 80. So here we have the 40 degrees, 60 degrees, and 80 degrees. You've worked out all of the angles of the triangle. So the question asks you to find the smallest of the three angles. So you would now know that the smallest is 40 degrees. Okay, so that pretty much sums up some of the key types of questions in the math section of the 11+. plus. Now I know this doesn't cover all of the different types of questions, but hopefully it gives you a better understanding in regards to some of the common types of questions that people struggle with. Now you can get free access to more testing questions by clicking on the link below and you can also subscribe to our channel now for more career advice, helpful resources and free testing questions. Thank you for watching.